Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to be discussing the differences between elements, compounds, and mixtures. I'm going to start with the concept of mixture because really it is the most complex. What you see on your screen is a model of a mixture, and I know it's a mixture because each particle looks different from one another. For example, I see this purple particle looking very different from this larger molecule particle which in turn looks different from this particle over here. Whenever you see those distinct differences between particles, you know you have a mixture because we couldn't write a singular chemical formula to describe this sample of matter. We'd have to use and signs to show that this mixture is composed of particles of Pu atoms, molecules of PuY2, molecules of Pi2. Mixtures are also characterized by their ability to be separated physically. What I mean by that is I could actually physically come in and pull apart all these different components of this mixture and sort them into individual piles, right? A pile of B atoms, a pile of Pu atoms, Pi molecules, and so on and so forth. Once this sort has been completed, we no longer have a mixture, but instead we have groups of pure substances. So we'll sort of draw lines to show the results of my sort. Pure substances can be characterized further. You can tell there's sort of some differences going on here. In this box, we have particles that look the same, but they're made of atoms that look different. The same is true up here. Particles that look the same, but individual atoms linked together that look different. Over on the left-hand side of your screen, each particle again looks the same, but so do all of the atoms within each box. We have terms to distinguish between these two types of pure substances. Over on the right-hand side of your screen, we have examples of compounds. Compounds are characterized by being made of more than one type of atom. So in this case, we have B, P, U. Each particle is going to be named using this formula, B, P, U. However, the Bs and the P, Us are, of course, different. Same here. Every particle in this box is going to be P, U, Y, 2. So different atoms, but each particle is identical. That's what characterizes a compound. Over on this side, where things seem to be a little bit simpler, we have elements. Elements are characterized by being made up of the same type of atom. So in this case, even though we have a chemical bond, we only have one type of atom. The same goes here. It's just an individual atom we should be able to find these symbols on the periodic table where these actual elements. What's noteworthy about elements and compounds is their ability to be separated. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, I can't physically separate the compounds. All I'd get are two piles of the same thing. However, I can go in and if I really had the right tools, break the chemical bonds that link these two different types of atoms together. Were I to do this type of separation, I would call it a chemical separation because I have broken the chemical bond that holds that compound together. After that chemical separation, I now have two piles of two distinctly different things, a pile of B and a pile of Pu. That's what a chemical separation is all about the ability to break chemical bonds to form two or more new things. If we look on this side of the screen, it's easy to see with these individual atoms that there is no ability to be chemically separated. But the same is true of this diatomic element up top. If I came in and I broke that chemical bond, yes, I'd have two piles, but those two piles are exactly the same. That's not a separation in chemistry. That's just breaking a bond to get two of the same thing. So what distinguishes elements from compounds is the ability to be chemically separated. Compounds have the ability to be separated by chemical means, whereas elements do not have the ability to be separated 
by chemical means.